this sample is the thread loop and at the end I show you about the swing tack. Now I'm working with a piece of muslin that is seven and a half inches uh, wide by two and a half inches and I'm simply going to fold it over and I'm going to decide you know where I put my swing tack for this oh, I'm thread loop for the sample. I'm using double thread I've knotted the end. Uh, I can choose which side is my back side, which in this case it will be the other side behind me. I'm going to start my th swing tack here. Now the swing tack is, uh, I'm sorry, thread loop. I say that interchangeably, but I should say swing, uh, thread loop. Um, this is good for when you have to have um, a small loop to connect with a button or maybe you need a little loop to put a belt through and sometimes it doesn't have to be a loop sometimes it can be kind of like a belt loop like a little bar so how you get started is first you do you, you put you put your needle through I like to give it a little tack just a small stitch um, just to kind of hold it down because sometimes that knot wants to pull through. Now the first thing, you, next thing you have to do is start a chain stitch. And this chain stitch you have to start with a loop. And that loop has to be twisted. You twist that loop. And you have to get this intersection that's here as close as you can to the fabric. And then when you get that as close as you can to the fabric, then you can begin to pull your thread that's connected to the needle through and create a next loop. So I'm going to pull this, this leg that's right here and I'm going to pull it through. And again, I'm going to make sure that that intersection is down there. The first stitch is a little difficult, so I'm going to actually hold it down, pull the bottom of the new loop and make sure that that gets connected really tight to the bottom. If I don't think it's tight enough, guess what? It's a chain stitch. I can just take it and just pull it right out. So again, I didn't like that one. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. And again, I'm going to try my best to get this. Um, let me start over here. This intersection as close to the bottom as I can. So again, notice I'm holding it down. And I'm going to begin to pull. And if it's not close enough, I'm going to maneuver it until it is. And it may, the, getting the first one or two can be a little difficult. Okay, um, I'm fairly happy with that. I'm going to kind of just finagle it till it gets close. Now, I'm going to take and um, make another loop and I'm going to pull this thread through, but it, I'm not going to pull the needle through. I'm just going to pull the thread. And again, I'm going to tighten it up. And because it's the second stitch, I'm still going to hold on to this bottom so that it's tight to the bottom. Okay. And then I just continue doing that. In this case, I'm going to continue pulling my thread through. Notice I'm not letting the needle come through. Uh, I'm just kind of holding on to it. And making sure that it doesn't go through. So I just continue to make these chains until I get about, um, I would say, an inch and a half. See, that one's not as close as I would like it, but that's okay. You'll get the idea. And my thread is knotting. So if it knots, you just have to work it. All right, and then continue to pull the thread through. Okay, keep making those new chains. When you first do this, it can actually be a little confusing, but you'll get it. Don't don't fret. It actually goes pretty quickly. Since I'm working on a small sample, it, the the sample wants to get away from me. But I think you'll get you'll see how I can continue to make that loop. The loop will actually um, make rather quickly. And I would do this until I have about an inch and a half um, to make a small thread loop. 
Again, I'm not pulling my needle thread through. And I hate to make this a long video, but uh, I want to show you how to end it. Go slow again. Okay, I'm going to measure um, and see how long I have my thread loop. I'm going to give it a little bit more. I'm going to try to make it an inch and a half. You see, it goes rather quickly. You can use quadruple thread. It'll make a thicker chain. Um, it just all depends on what you're doing. Okay, I'm going to measure again. Uh, that's almost there. A few more stitches. Okay, let's try that. That's close enough. Now, because I don't want to keep it as a chain stitch, now I'm going to put my needle through that loop. I've got that loop and I'm going to actually put my needle. When I pull through this time, my chain is locked and it's not going to come out. So now I want to bring this around and create a little um, loop. Like I said, you could stitch it like this and it'd be a bar, or you can just create a little loop like this. Pull your needle back to the other side. I'm sticking the needle down near where I put it at. I'm going to turn this over and tie it, end it like we usually do with a tack or a knot off. Do one more time. And then we just cut this off. And we have a, a thread loop. I could put a button through there, a small belt. Um, it has a lot of uses. Now I also want to show you about the swing tack. Swing tack is used when you want to keep two layers uh, in place. For example, I will say this is a lining of a skirt and this is the outside of the skirt. But I don't want my lining to roll up the dress. So I may put a swing tack in it to allow it to have some moving uh, ease, but it doesn't go away from the place that I want it. So I put a swing, I start a thread loop and I make my ch little chain. And where I want to connect the layer, I let the other end live on the second layer so that it becomes a way for the fabric to swing. It is between two layers. That's why this sample would be like this. It's like undercover. Thread loop is just out in the open. All right, that's it.